goodness. It looks like a pea flag mother. Hello, it's your very own Kelly G here. I got into drags today uh, to talk to you about something very important. I have nails on. One of my very favorite drag queens once said that you can't just have one on, because that's not doing drag. You have to have at least two, because one is just nail. You have to have two to have nails. Yeah. This video is gonna be about pride, if you haven't noticed. My beautiful background, my beautiful buttons, my beautiful hair, it's wonderful. In particular, it's gonna be about Pocatello pride. I'm making this video because I want to help my community be better. It's a noble cause. I think one of the ways that we can make our community better is through an exchange of ideas. The best way that I know how to do that is by making a video and putting it out to the large audience of Pocatello through the internet. I don't know. Very hard to get your voice heard sometimes. If you did not know, today is June 1st, yes! June 1st! This is the first day of Pride Month, which is when most of the queer pride events are held. In my area of the country, there's going to be a pride event uh, every single weekend. There's going to be Utah Pride Fest in Salt Lake City um, from the 3rd to the 5th. Twin Falls is the weekend of the 11th. Boise Pride Fest is the weekend of the 18th, and then Pocatello LGBT Pride is the 24th through the 25th. We also have Idaho Falls Pride, but that takes place in September. They're like rebels or something. A couple of people, mostly other drag queens, have been asking me if I'm going to be participating in my community's pride, and I'm sorry to say, but at this point in the game, I'm not going to be attending at all. Now, the reason for this is because Pocatello Pride charges an admission fee. And while that may not seem like a big deal, I, I have a huge problem with it. And I'm gonna explain why. Let's just quickly go back to, like, history when we can understand why Pride even exists in the first place, okay? 1969, June, Stonewall Inn. The police raid the place and the collective force of people like Silvio Rivera, Marsha P. Johnson, and Stormy De Larvary. They brought the community together in what is considered the beginning, the start, of the gay rights movement. I'll put a couple of videos in the description in case you need a little brush up on your queer history. At Pride, the queer community is celebrating the event that brought them together as a force for justice. They needed the pride that the community brought because society was telling them that they were sick, they were immoral, they were wrong, and that they needed to feel bad about that. I know that we all know that message in the back of our heads, but for people that have been out, they've started to feel safe and secure in the communities that they've found, and that kind of lets them forget the way that they felt before they were out. But I'll tell you who does not have that luxury, and that is kids. Specifically, kids who stay closeted grow up in our society, possibly with religious things going on. Pressures to stay closeted, to stay ashamed, and not take pride in who they really are. And anyone from Pocatello will tell you that kids around here, in our heavily LDS community, are going to fit that bill. Now, Pocatello Pride admission costs $10. Purchasing a ticket can get you in for free at Club Charlie's that evening, the Saturday. And there's also a $25 package for family. And I'm reading this directly off the of Pocatello Pride site. Family packet tickets, $25, which includes two adults up to three children under 16. It also says that children under 12 are free. I'm gonna ignore the fact that this family packet is incredibly heteronormative at this point. And I also want to iterate that I'm not trying to attack Pocatello Pride or All Under One Roof who puts it on in any way. But if you look at the prices, you'll see that there's a specific group of people who are getting left out of this. And these are kids from 13 to 20 who are not allowed to go to the bar and may not have a single lick of money. These may be queer kids who are just discovering themselves and would wholly benefit from a, an event where people like them are getting together to celebrate who they are. Now, in my view, I have a problem with Pride festivals costing money at all. Personally, I think that they should be free for everyone, but simply because they are a huge cultural event that centers around our community. And our community should include people regardless of their financial situation. Now, a lot of people, when I have brought this up to them, have told me that it makes sense that Pride costs money, and they will often cite that Salt Lake City Pride also costs money. But to them, I have to say that um, we are not in Salt Lake City. 
Now, from what I've heard, the people in Salt Lake, thank God almighty in heaven, are turning Salt Lake City into a mini San Francisco. <laughs> I'm going to Salt Lake City Pride for the first time this weekend, and I don't really have any experience in this, so my opinions might change. However, Boise Pride Fest, a nice little capital here in Idaho, does not have a fee to participate in the basic festival, the rally, and the march. And their community event is getting larger and more organized every year. Now, at the very least, I'm calling for Pocatello Pride to reconsider its ticket pricing for young members of our community. All Under One Roof has often said in its advertising that we do our best to keep event costs down. And even though the proceeds all go to All Under One Roof, an LGBT organization, I feel that the best way to build our community is to make Pride easily accessible, especially to the young members of our community. Because the young members of our community will be building it in the future. I don't know if you remember what it's like being a teenager, or if you've experienced being a closeted queer kid at all. But I know for a fact that I would not have asked my parents for $10 to go to the Pride Fest in my community. <laughs> I just simply would not have had the guts. I'm sorry. What I'm advocating here is not for free admission just for the sake of not paying. I'm advocating for free admission that will help build our community. Something that if we don't start building now, we could end up paying for in the future. My original idea was to end this video saying that I was going to stand outside the Pride Gates contribute to fixing the problem, and pay for all the young people's tickets. But I'm a broke college drag queen. Broke in college is redundant. Even if I had a hundred dollars to spend, I'd still only be able to pay for 10 kids. That's pretty sobering. I don't want to be sitting here spitting in the wind, but this is what I know how to do. Consider writing the newspaper, your community members, and organization leaders so that we can help start a change. I plan to do the same thing. If we can get it changed for this year, hopefully we'll be able to get it changed for next year and the year after that and so on. I was talking to one of my friends and they said that a couple years back, people were able to pay for admission with canned goods. That would be helping our community. Consider what I've said about building a community through young people and set aside some money to pay for kids who want to go to Pride this year. Feel free to comment below and start a conversation about this. I know a lot of people I've talked to have felt very strongly that I'm misguided on this subject, but I know that there's a way that we can make Pride more accessible to our community. So I want to do what I can to make that a reality. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Oh, and happy Pride Month, goodness gracious. Go out and have a fun time celebrating being gay, bi, trans, ace, queer in general, you know. It's a happy time. It's a fun time. It's a good time. It's a happy time. Pride is fun. Make it a good month. Bye!